61A, lecture number 31, announcements. Homework eight is due Thursday. It's very short. Just one question is required. But this question is about writing a macro. How do you do that? Well, I'd encourage you to take the following approach. Before you even think about defining a macro, try to build up the expression that you're supposed to be defining. So let's say we want an expression that calls some procedure that squares on all the values in a list of two and three. That's the result, and that's the expression. But when you define a macro, you're building up an expression like this out of named components. For example, you might have a symbol, x. You might have a body expression, times xx. You might have a values expression, list two, three. And then your goal is to create that same expression out of those components. So that's a list starting with map, containing a list starting with lambda, the symbol, the body, and the vowels. Now that's not right. Sim should be x because we didn't evaluate symbol in this context, which we could do with unquote. If we unquote in sim and unquote the body and unquote the vowels, then we get an expression that looks about right. Maybe it is right. How could we tell? Well, we could stare at the difference for a long time, or we could evaluate this to make sure that it gives us the right result. Since it gives us the right result, we've built the right body of a macro. So we just copy that and define the macro. For all symbol body vowels, compute this result. And now we can say for all x in square the list two, three, and we'll get four, nine. So the point of this discussion is to tell you that when you're defining a macro, first work interactively to get the body expression of the macro based on pieces that you've defined already. And when it works for one example, maybe it'll work for other examples too. Check and make sure that it does work for other examples. I could cube each element instead of squaring, and it works just fine. I think this approach to developing scheme macros is much more effective than just typing the answer into a file and running the OK tests and hoping that you get it right that way. In addition to homework eight, please complete the scheme project. It's due next Wednesday. There is a checkpoint this Thursday. Now, if you don't complete the checkpoint, you only lose that one point. But it is a good idea to complete the checkpoint so that you can get full credit and you'll be on track to finish the whole scheme project by next Wednesday. Or better yet, complete it by next Tuesday for an early submission bonus point. This weekend, we'll have a gorilla section on interpreters, tail recursion, and macros starting at noon on Saturday in the labs of Soda Hall. And finally, we will have a completely optional contest to create recursive art using your scheme interpreter. This contest is completely optional. If you don't want to participate, that's fine. But if you do, it can be a lot of fun to use your interpreter to build some interesting artwork. If you want to participate in the contest, please submit your entry by Monday the 2nd of December. That's right after Thanksgiving. To get started, download the scheme contest zip and then copy over your finished implementation of the scheme project. Then write a scheme file that generates some art and take a screenshot. You'll send us your source code and the screenshot so that we can show your artwork to everybody else in the class. Winners of the contest will be selected by popular vote. We'll just release a gallery of everybody's entries and let you all decide which art has the most dramatic impact on your lives. You can work with a partner. Depending on the length of your entry, you will enter into either the featherweight or heavyweight category, and each team can enter only one of these two. It's possible to earn a little bit of extra credit 
for doing very well in the contest, but that's not a good reason to participate. I'd recommend participating for the sake of art itself. We will post your code and your images online, and to increase the chance that people will vote for your art, you are welcome to include both a title and a descriptive haiku in the comments of your entry, and these will be included in the gallery that we post so that students can read about your art and thereby enrich their viewing experience. This is a recursive art contest, so please have some iterative or recursive element to your art. Don't just draw text, because even if it's funny, it's not recursive, and the recursive entries are the ones that are going to win. If you want to see some past entries, we've been running this art contest for a while. It's one of my favorite parts of this course, and there have been some wonderfully creative entries in the past. Or you could not look at the past entries and just come up with something yourself, which might be an even better path to victory. Good luck.